Oh yeah, baby dolls, welcoming you back to crypto's juiciest news. We've got Bitcoin sitting at around $56,000. And the most important thing is the weekly super trend. Remember, the super trend is just three times the ATR, which is the average range. It just gives a three range multiplier on the up and the down. And then if you ping one side, so if you break it through the high, they call it an uptrend, okay? Because it's significant, man. You went three times your average distance. You're doing something good. It's kind of like if you ran, if you run at 10 kilometers an hour and then you finish your race at 30 kilometers an hour, that's like, wait, you might be actually running on a skateboard or something, right? So that's pretty much the trend that uh, gets changed. Now, obviously, it can happen to the downside as we experience in crypto as well. The higher the time frame, the bigger a move needed. And as you go up in time frames, comparing like a one hour to one week, one hour just flips up and down all the time, which I'll actually show you right now. One hour, it's just, you have to trade with it differently. You see this green, red, buy, sell, buy, sell, just buy, sell. It's green, red, up, down, up, down, up, down. When you change it to weekly, it takes much longer and much more effort to actually flip it. When we flipped up, it was literally the beginning of the uh, of 2023. And look at this, we just ended the bear market. This is pretty much when I said, oh, wow, we've actually done this. This is very significant. Pretty much the bear market's over. Okay, even though I was calling for the bottom down here. This, this is how I knew. But now... We're now in a bit of a pickle situation, right? So we recently flipped red, but we didn't close the week. You have to close the week. As I told you, back in 2016, 2017 cycle, there were six false alarms, six. And finally, on the seventh false alarm, that was the start of the bear market, 2018. All right. Now, we have just had our first one here, our first one here. I don't know if there's going to be five or six. I hope. I hope we keep going. I hope this is a false alarm. But yeah, it is still possible, friends, that we come back down if lips red. I'm not going to lie. But, you know, look, look at the size of those wicks, right? If you go back to that previous cycle I was talking about, these are all these false alarms. Look, that huge wicks down here. You want to see this, friends? This is literally a 19% wick. I mean, look at this. Bitcoin rallied back up 20% and it did not fill, come back and fill. Okay, also, look, it did the same thing here. Bitcoin went up 10% and it didn't fill. And even on this, look at this wild one. It went up 30% and it didn't fill. Didn't come back to fill the gap. So it is possible, right, from here, from the bottom here, yeah, it's possible. This is well within expectations, right, that we're up 10 to 14%, and we don't go back on what they call filling the candle gap. So we do, we do not actually have to go back. Um, a lot of people are going to try to put up their Elliott waves and stock market correlations and everything else. But, hey, look, I'll just tell you one thing, right? We were able to go up with 5% interest rates, all right? So what everyone thinks about interest rates is not – the truth, friends. The truth is that they print money anyway. Interest rates help with this inflation reading and the kippy out there in the real economy. It doesn't stop their money printing. They still print in the background. They still have like these TGE and TJA and Batman symbol stuff where it's just Microsoft Excel sheets moving around. Uh, they have that BTFP, buy the F and dip type of that joke uh, Excel sheet that they made. That's all they're doing, Excel sheet tabs, and they just move money into their currency. Okay, so that's all still happening in the background. None of that has changed whatsoever. The debt is still big. The debt is still big. And the market knows, man. The market knows, hey, no matter what happens, uh, you guys have to print money. But, you know, we're always going to have these jitters, right? We're, like, so scared, man. What about the Japanese yen carry? And, right, does, is Japanese adult films, do they really put that blurry pixels on the genitals? Yes, apparently it's illegal to show your genitals in Japan, so they just have to blur everything out. I know, I know. Everyone's just discovering all of that now. A lot of people have heard – I was watching Corey and um and Dane. I'm talking about the yen carry trade, and because they're real estate guys – they um they're from Pulse Chain Community, right? DeFi Crypto Alliance, great channel, uh, great channel to watch. They were talking about how they're in real estate and they didn't know about all this uh what's going out there in the world of finance. Yeah, they don't want you to know because <laughs> it's literally one guy prints a lot of money on this island, another guy prints a lot of money on this island, and there's like fifteen conduits to make it to the other cross. That's just banks swapping money, and they take they peel off money, they peel off money. Everyone just peels off money, and somehow they made a basis point here and a basis point here. <laughs> They're all incentivized to keep that number go up. They're all incentivized to do it. Why do you think every politician just comes in, right? The people who are paying for them, the richest guys, all these the bank executives and all these other uh, bug eater institutions, why do you think they're like, hey, you know what's really good? That debt, man, that's got to go up <laughs> both sides. Okay, that's why. That, that's how it works, right? Because they benefit. They all benefit. They all benefit in the money printing. Because they, here's the thing. If, you, if you're going to make, let's say, if you're going to make 1%, okay, of, of a big number, uh, let's say 1% of $100 billion. 
All right. And then you could get politicians to argue about whether they should print one trillion. Right, right. You're going to 10x your money. That's what they're doing. That's what this what they're doing. These banks are doing. Okay. And they end up funneling that way. So that's why the incentives are basically bullish for crypto. The incentives are always for them to keep printing US currency and fiat currency and for them to eventually funnel it in and buy scarce assets. But let's see how we go for crypto for the next few weeks. Now, this is the others BTC chart, friends. This is our North Star, our guiding star. Uh, yeah, we've stowed, slowed down here, but we're, we're like, obviously, we're, we're under schedule. We're behind schedule right now. I don't know if we're going to continue up. I don't know. All I can tell you right now is now this thing is like, it's moved even lower. So th this is a sad part. Before, we only needed, we needed basically altcoins outside of the top 10 to be 24% of Bitcoin's market cap for us to flip green. Now, because the bar is so low, we only need 21%. So we, we don't need this gap anymore. So it basically means, uh, it could just mean diminishing gains, right? This is actually what's happened each time, each cycle. See, it happened back then on the left-hand side. So yes, it could just mean one wave, two waves. You, you don't know. You don't know. That's, the, that's everything outside of the top 10. And so there's no guarantees that we are going to like even continue in the next few months. We'll see. But then you see some stuff, friends, and you see the stock market, and then you see my five emergency breaking news tweets where I tell you that Jim Cramer is bearish. He's saying it's not cheap yet. And it all comes down to US stocks, right? This is the Russell. The Russell 2000, friends, did the biggest, what they call a tequila. <laughs> did a biggest, like, lying to us. Oh, man, that's funny. That's funny. It did, it did the worst case. It did the worst case. But, hey. That arrow is where traditionally in the past it will start to break the highs, October, all right, October. You know, we'd actually go back and see, yeah, it did these throwbacks as well back then, but it could keep going up. That's the previous Bitcoin halvening. And if you want to go before that, another Bitcoin halvening, yeah, it did this U-turn, but then it just starts vertically reversing up. So, yes, and that's even the one before as well, just uptrending. So, yeah, it is a cause for concern because you're like, well, if the U.S. small cap bucket is not filled up yet, why are they going to come to the crypto bucket? Yeah, it's a fair question. We'll see. Now, if we check out the S&P 500 fans, if you're wondering like about the uh, this macro stuff, you know, Yen Carry, what's going on? Um, shout out to Lynn Alden. It, the, the Yen Carry friends, right? So talking about, remember Corey and Dane? They're like, oh, I never know what's going on. All this Ponzi stuff. Yeah. When you're in real estate, you're localized. So you have an advantage out here and you don't have to move a lot of money you've only got to, you got to move like less than 10 mil less than 5 mil when you're dealing with like these big institutions and countries and industries literally industries the steel industry they've got to move like okay we've got to move 45 billion dollars over the next 18 months they have to do all these hedging and currency stuff and everything's got to be protected because you know even a five percent deviation on 45 billion is like it's 2.5 billion so they have to do all these hedging and make these bonds and all these other trade deal agreements and all these and all that money gets moved and shifted around then the yen carry trade comes in and it went on for 30 years but it's still i think it's still going on it's but the total size of it, it's not that big it's only 1.7 trillion dollars max now 1.7 trillion yeah it's a lot for guess japan's and stuff but u.s stock market is 40 trillion market cap that's the u.s the world is 120 trillion so yeah, there are bigger, worse carry trades and all of these out here. And there's even ones where there's, you know, uh, like the mess we had before where people had uh, wrong duration mismatches. So all this stuff goes around. And that's why all these currencies, they're all basically just interlocked with each other and they never really deviate too much because they all have to print with each other and do this type of junk. But where does that leave us in crypto? Well, this world, you and I, we can't get access to that because these guys have to make 0.1% on enormous volume, right? That's the future of crypto eventually one day. Right now, we don't even, like the slippage to get in is so big and uh, the liquidity is so thin, that's where we are compensated. But we're taking the risk. These guys have like industries that have been around for like 80 years that have been doing this stuff, you know what I mean? You have very, very low risk when it comes to that world. That's why it's, it's so competitive, right? But in crypto, they don't even know it's going to be around tomorrow. I mean, like we drop 40% in a day, hell, like, you know, we could drop another 99% tomorrow and just go and delete ourselves, right? Now, this is the stock market S&P 500. It's not even at a concerning level, friends, 7%. You know, stock market, they don't even call for emergency cuts, friends, even at 10%, 11%. This is where they start to do it, the 20% mark, okay, 20% drops. And when they start to do stuff like that, that's when they're like, okay, is a regime chain or is something happening here? And that's what you've been looking at right up here. It's still up for the year. The S&P 500 is still up for the year. If you go up to for, from January of the year, yeah, man, it's still up 9%. It's still up an average amount. 
So, I mean, like, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we, we screw around here. Or we don't even know where this thing is going. But it doesn't even really call for all these concerns. But they know, man, they they know that they've over-tightened. They know. It's it's not over-tightened. Like, they've, uh, they, they know they've cracked something. They know something's cracked. Now, I know, friends, it's really, really hard. Look, in an ideal world, you and I can just say, oh, wow, they're going to cut rates, doom time. That's an ideal world. But... In a world where they've printed so much money and we have this crypto cycle, man, like friends, Widowmaker is fading that crypto cycle so far. And like, but it should be both ways. Okay. So what I'm coming from is I'm thinking about, all right, if it's July, 2025 and you're fading the crypto cycle, okay. You might be a dead man walking. You might say, well, I believe it's going to go on for another six months or another 12 months. Yeah. You're a dead man walking. Okay, I'm thinking, well, why can't we do it this way? Okay. We're now before the four-year cycle, traditionally finishing. Why can't we just say, you know what? I think if I sell now, I'm a dead man walking. I think I'm going to miss out. Even Friends, this is the dangerous part, man. Crypto prices are so low, man. You know, they just go up at 2x from here. You've lost half your position. Friends, imagine losing half your kidney. Okay. Losing one of your kidneys or one of your lungs. You've literally lost half your position. Yes. Like if you're selling, uh, for example, Pulsex, Right, if it just does a double here, it's the forty percent below day one sack. You know what I mean? Like, and you've lost half your position. If hex goes from one cent, not even it's not even one cent now. It's like seven tenths of a cent, whatever it is. Okay, if it just goes up to one point four cents fast in a month, which eventually just could happen, uh, <clears throat> a month or two months, you're like, okay, um, I was waiting for this big crash minus sixty percent lower. Now I can only get half my position. Okay, then you finish. You What do you do at that point? You're gonna firm it back in. You're gonna be reading all the fud, and then eventually that's how people get this. Uh, this, this mindset of like, don't worry, I'm just going to follow all the bearish people. And that's how people slip it up. And it all starts because you took a, a bite of that cherry. You basically want to get rid of the pain by just clicking sell and dodging stuff. But hey, man, it's the four-year cycle. We'll see. We'll see. Now, I actually have some news here from Eric Trump, one of Donald Trump's sons. He says, I have truly fallen in love with crypto. That's what he says. And DeFi. Stay tuned for a big announcement. Now, I hope, bro, I hope it's not a pumped up fun coin. Otherwise, <laughs> can you imagine it's a pumped fun coin? Oh, man. And also, shout out to Corey, Corey Costa. That is amazing. Yeah, it is. Because, friends, here's the thing, man. Yeah, it might be an NFT. It might be just something boring. It might be some, okay, it might be a grift, whatever. Don't worry, man. Friends, he's got, he's got exposure. You see, he's, he's pushing it out there to the world. You just need him to keep saying the word. Just keep saying the word. People will find their own way. They'll find their own way in crypto. Right, so there's people. They're like, "Hey, man, uh, Donald Trump said crypto and Bitcoin, and now his son said it, and they're just hearing it in different places, right?" And then MSNBC Joe is arguing with Nassim Taleb about Bitcoin, right? They're just hearing about these places. This builds up the runway to the media hype. Then you have the big rush of euphoria from these people, FOMO. If Bitcoin cracks 100k, that's how it all builds up. You like, you want to see this stuff. You love seeing. Ah, oh, there's people sideline now. See what I mean? Like Eric Trump, I have fall, truly fallen in love with crypto, but you think, okay, you're in, no, but not everyone else is in yet. You can feel it right now. You know, maybe Katy Perry saying this in 12 months is like the ultimate doom top signal again. By the way, that's another exotic top signal. It's Katy Perry doing something with crypto, right? She's marked that two out of two times. Okay. So that's just, that's where we're coming from. And that's why like, I know there's, oh, Japan yen carry and interest rates and all this stuff. Look, I, I'm just, I'm just going to be completely honest, man. Anybody who, look, I was covering macro in 2022 and it just got so boring because I remember just saying, man, I go, guys, look, anybody who trades crypto off macro, you're a cuck, you're a soy boy, you're a soy girl, um, and you're a loser. And I know you're a loser because you are going to completely mess yourself up going on this cycle from here on. Because this one worked once, you're now going to try it again, now you're going to screw it up. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the same people who sold their crypto down here, paper handed out, I wouldn't be surprised, right? These people, they missed out on the rally. Those people were selling because, oh, crypto's down in interest rates. Interest rates cause it down. Okay, but then we rallied after 5% five, after 5 interest rate hike, okay? I will, no, no surprises here if those same people, they end up selling crypto. Let's say, let's say for some reason, let's say Bitcoin can actually get to like 90K, okay? And then drops back down to 70 and then everyone's like, oh, they've cut rates. Now the recession's going to come, right? I won't be surprised if these same people, they're the ones selling back here if something like this happens. And then they actually miss out on 
the actual final run. And then they actually buy back in here because they're like, oh, they've cut rates and they've stopped the recession. No more. It's a soft landing. And then they actually get the pain part. Same way that later on. Okay. Uh, also, just to warn you as well, I can look, friends. I can. I'm looking into the future, and I'm not. I'm not seeing this. To be honest, I'm not seeing Bitcoin spike up to 220 and then just go back down as well. I I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing really disgusting cheap mode scamming distribution up there. All right. I'm. I'm seeing. I'm seeing something like this. Up to 190, back down. Everyone thinks it's over. Whoop, up to 210, no back down, bang, like that. I'm seeing something stupid like that, and then you freaking drop. I'm, I'm just seeing like this big, rounded garbage. I don't know why. I'm, I'm just seeing something like that. I'm seeing something that reminds me of like this part, this chart pattern, where it's just the whole zone of like multiple old seasons. I, I'm seeing, that's what, I'm just seeing something like that because I think it's just too easy. Bitcoin spikes up to 210K in like 30 days and everyone's out. I'm, I'm not seeing that at all. I'm seeing uh, it being tougher than that. Now, for you friends, I'm gonna play some nice. I wanna be the very best that no one ever was. Some Pokemon music because for us to be the best, we really have to believe, friends. That is all we're relying on right now. Bitcoin around fifty-six thousand dollars. We have that weekly super trend. It's funny; it might just come down to it, friends. I mean, like, look, look. No one in crypto is using it. None of these mainstream influencers, because friends are all obsessed with themselves. They're all like taking hundred k payments to shill, shill to shill some new coin on their channel and stuff. Okay, they don't even, they don't even have skin in the game. But look, this is this is the monthly chart of Bitcoin. Okay, and yeah, if you wait for the monthly chart to finally flip red, it's too much. It's too late. So altcoins already down ninety percent by this point. Okay, so we've gone through the past. Here we are right now. It just doesn't seem like it's over, man. It just it doesn't seem like it's over. Um, if we go back to that weekly chart though. Look, I'm just going to look what worked in the past. That's it. Weekly super trend. Weekly super trend. Okay. When If, if we flip red, yeah, it's it's poopy time and it's game over. That's always possibility, by the way. Just to let you know, many people believe this part is going to happen now. And what I've done is I've just done a ghost fractal. I've used the ghost fractal too, tool. So I'm going to bring that out here. This is actually, friends, what people see right now. Okay. And by people, I just mean like what, just like everyone out there. So, and they actually believe like it might even like do something like this, right? Well, this is where we are now. A lot of people, I saw like uh, Copen do this, Ben Copen and some other people. They really believe that this is happening. They really believe that uh, we're having an extended cycle for the wrong reasons. But um, so this is so obviously, friends, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, why is it called Copen, by the way? Of course, you blocked me. <laughs> if you don't want to be called Copen, you just got to click down block button. All right. Now, everyone's thinking is, well, if they're cutting rates, the economy is cracked, and what's going to happen is we are going to stall, failed rally, stock market's going to send us down and we're dead, and then they're going to have to print money, and then actually the bull market will then begin next year, and it will run into like 2026. So they think like we basically got another 12 months of pain and misery going nowhere. A lot of people are saying that, especially with this recent price action. And you know what? We could, we could, but for me personally, I'll only start to talk like that as a possibility if we can flip red on the super trend, okay? If we flip red on the super trend, okay, sweet. You might make the case, okay, it's 2019 because this flip red on the super trend and then doom came after that, okay? But right now, I think talking about those types of stuff, you're a cuck. I think you're an actual cuck until that weekly super trend flips um, because right now, it's just, uh, you're basically just being a little bitch and you're like praying for Bitcoin dominance to keep rising up. You're praying for Ethereum to keep suffering so these types of people, friends, I, I know it just looks like this thing has gone on forever. I mean, like, I, I don't care what Bitcoin does. I mean, bro, you have been green for 560 days. Look how dangerous that is. I mean, like, you, look at this. You were also green for 546 days here. Like, you just, and and let's say you just wanted to go to the very end here when you flipped red again. That's 900 days. It's just It just seems like you're just, you're playing with fire now. Just, it really feels like playing with fire because, friends, I mean, like, have you used Bitcoin? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like nothing's changed. It takes like 18 hours to do anything on it. There is nothing on it. Check out the megaphone pattern, right? The friendly megaphone. Look at that. It actually came back in, man. That's wild. That's actually wild. It's come back into the zone. Uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about the need to like be above this 56K mark. But look, man, we, we know, friends, $52,000 is the weekly super trend um, price, price uh, area. And we need to be basically closing the week above that for friendship and kindness. Having some fun here as well, right? 
Just got off the phone with the soy boy. It looks like he's waiting for prices much, much lower. Yeah, everyone is. Everyone's waiting for prices much lower. Um, there are analysts, friends, a lot of analysts um, are saying, also Jim Cramer saying, Jim Cramer has basically he said multiple times, the, a bounce would be short-lived. The, the bounce is only going to be quick. It's not going to even gonna, it's not gonna last or anything. That's what pretty much everyone's saying. Um, and everyone's basically calling for no short-term bounce. They go, ah, you're going to have plenty of time. I've watched a lot of people as well. Pretty much everyone's saying, don't catch a falling knife. Stand back, stand back. Don't do it. Uh, wait till the waters are clear. And I've also noticed, this is a common theme, everyone I've watched, they all say, don't worry, you're going to have plenty of time to deploy. Right, and after the first first person on time time ahead, they're like, okay, it could be, and the next one, and the next one, and now they're like, it's I'm not joking, it's like four YouTubers, and I can't even, I've lost count how many people on Twitter, right? Probably like over ten. I'm like, wait, it's like fourteen of you are convinced we're gonna have plenty of time to accumulate. By the way, that was like you know when the crashing part. Don't worry, it's gonna be down here for a long time. You'll be able to buy all those cheap coins over those idiots. I don't know, man. Are you shaken? Maybe you're a bit shaken, but have you lost faith? No, no. All we've done is, go, okay, you make us wait another year. You make us wait another year. I still believe. You see, it's a difference now. The difference is they sold everything into stable coins. Okay, now they're acting like little bitches. Um, talk about stable coins, though. Check this out. Right, look at look at this, friends. So, Ansem, Soilana Summer, Soilana Fall, Soilana Winter, Soilana Spring, Soilana Cycle, MFs. Look at the first reply, man. Aren't you in stable coins? Dude, we clearly remember you bragging. Literally, the guy... I mean, like, shout out to Anton, bro. But it's just like... I don't know if you're drunk while doing these or, like, where your head's at. But people watch... Pay very, very close attention to people who are like, Hey, I'm the best. I do these TA calls. And, like, you know... And I'm friends we clearly remember... Dude, the guy was just literally bragging he's in stable coins as we're capitulating here. Now it's like, oh, we're winning. Like, it just... See what I mean, friends? What, what was going on during this heap? Mass fee, mass panic. Like, oh, oh, I sold. I actually sold the top, guys. I actually sold the top. And now after recovering, oh, did I mean I sold the top? Did I mean I sold? No, no, no. I'm actually in. I'm actually in. The, the, look, whether it's, it's like that or it's just playing around, but that's the... These people lose trust, man. They just lose trust over time. Okay, friends? That's why, why does everyone respect me? Okay? Why does everyone respect me? Because I say, hey, things are down. It's really bad. And they're like, oh, are you going to click sell? Fuck no. I told you, playing the whole cycle. This is normal parts of crypto. You get kicked in the nuts 15 times. Oh, I got kicked in the nuts. Yeah. It's like the seventh time we've got kicked in the nuts. Get ready. There's like another eight more to come. Eight more times you want to feel like giving up. It's it, man. You, you can't avoid these swings. You can't. You literally can't. The only way to make it is to believe. Also, some just in news, right? Donald Trump on Monday will be doing a major interview with Elon Musk. Details to follow. So probably boring or probably the exact same stuff. But I just I like seeing consolidate power just because man, we want, I want the odds to increase, friends. We need we don't want Democrats getting in if they're gonna like crush crypto again and do stuff. And it's Marcus perception because man, Donald Trump is gonna slash these tax rates, man. Guys, you need them, trust me. You want these tax rates lowered, okay? You want these business tax rates lowered. You want to know why? You know, like, oh, the debt, the debt, the debt. No, 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 okay? We're going to take this Ponzi all the way to zero, okay? The US currency, all debt fear. Because these evil bug reptilian skin scum have been printing money for the past 70 years. Especially in the past 15 years, they have been printing money and profiting from it billions and billions and trillions of dollars accumulating scarce assets. They've been basically robbing the people. They're robbing the treasury now. Remember, tax from above is from the big man. Tax from below is from the money printer, okay? It's tax from beneath the floor, the hidden one. So now that they've been robbing everyone, like, oh, now, like, don't ever believe it, but he says, what about the debt? What about the debt? No, 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 no. You've been robbing everyone for 15 years. It's time for you just to get a little bit back. Now, by the way, they're still going to benefit from this, trust me, but at least... The public perception is that lower tax rates, hey, let's push the stocks and everything up and get one more flush up just so you can finish off the cycle and actually get some kindness and friendship. That's what it comes down to because you know there's only one thing that's going to happen eventually. Debt gets too big. They probably move everything to a chain, digital dollar. They have some sort of big event where they wipe out these currencies, uh, currency debt somehow. They do some rate reset. And everybody gets debased, okay? Check out this, Pepe. I love this image, friends. I really love this one. Fire up. 
Smash, smash, bye, bye, smash, smash, bye, bye. Look at it, look at it. That's what we need. That's what we need. Like, it's, look, <laughs> it depends. It, Marcus, man, moving target. Like, the fact that every single person, literally every single person said, don't catch the falling knife. Don't catch the falling knife. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess you should be catching the falling knife. I guess you should. They're all saying don't catch the falling knife. All right. Um, yeah, if we were destined for lower, I think everybody would be drawing the cope levels. Okay, they'll be drawing the cope levels. What's the cope levels? Well, this is how you know, friends. This is how you know, like, it's panic time, right? It's when you go down, when you're down here, and what everyone does is they go, don't worry, we've got a level. We've got a level at 48. We've got a level at 45. We've got a level here at 42. We've got a level here at 40. Friends, every single time I've seen people, like, all of the people draw this, you know what the market does? Fuck your levels. Every single time. I'm not joking. Every single time. I see us. Where's the other four levels here? Bang! Just everything just gets destroyed. Every single time, okay? But no one's talking about this. What's everyone's talking about? They go, oh, structure's broken. There are no levels. There are no levels. I think it's just logical, man. Look, we came back to the Bitcoin spot ETF launch price. Right there. Interesting. You tell me what's going on. Spooky. Now, friends, the Pulse Chain ecosystem has had a nice bounce in the past day. 4%, 5%. Everyone's thinking like, oh, wow, it means we're really, really strong. But yeah, look, I'm just being realistic. It's not that it's strong. It's just that it was already down. Um, it was already down 82%. From March, that's why many of these other coins, they were only down forty to sixty percent, right? They were only down that much. We were already down eighty-two percent. We already got destroyed a long time ago. So as the market's going down, we weren't going down as much as Ethereum, even though we still did go down a bit and we've reversed it pretty cool, quickly. So hopefully, like I, I don't want to jinx it again. Remember, friends, this has happened. Uh, this is now the fourth time we've happened. Richard Hart's coins go down. Everyone says it's trash for three months while everything else is still rallying. And then the rest of the market crashes. And everyone says, oh, we're well, just early. But then we would always have this optimism part in our hearts where we're like, oh, that means we're going to move early next time. Never happens. It's never happened. We never move early on the way up. We just have a crappier pump and then we dump back down. That's what's been the experience so far. Um, and yeah, obviously, we're just going to be honest, friends. Obviously, don't want to like... Uh, don't want to like you know make it too spicy with that Ethereum ETF, uh, Ethereum purchase by Richard Hart, but now the whole market is like definitely bearish on Pulse Chain. As long as Ethereum is under thirty nine hundred, they're like, whoa, man! Like it, your treasury is like really offside now, and there hasn't been any indication that money comes from exogenous sources out there. But you might find that the market just does what it wants to do; it just ignores it. Just like remember, remember when he was buying with? Remember, he, man, he spent fourteen million dollars with the sack rate. Uh, to push Pulsex up here and it got absolutely butchered, right? So people just ignoring the treasury wallet and dumping anyway. So I think it's fair, Mr. Market, if you're listening, please, or if you're Mrs. Market, I don't know these days, right? Whatever you are, Mr. Market, uh, if you're listening, I'm hoping that we do a nice swoop up and we ignore the fact that Ethereum, it's priced, the Pulse Chain Sacrifice wallet is like 40% offside uh, because... You know, that's around markets and network effects. They're bigger than that, right? You didn't come into Pulse Chain. You didn't come into Hex because, oh, maybe this guy has, a you know, 170,000 ETH in a wallet. So these network effects are bigger than most people think. Um, also, the altcoins, friends, it's the same thing everywhere. Um, what can you really do? I mean, like, just everything's still in the cheap zone. This is DWB. This is against the Pulse ratio. It's down 50, 60, 70, 80%. You'll probably find these things recover. But yeah, everyone's uns unsure. What's going to be the next narrative and stuff? I don't know. You told me we went from giving out the coins to everybody in crypto, then two cycles later. Now nobody gets the coins, so we have to make meme coins, okay? But we're still having fun, right? The dick still has a butt. So this cute WDWB. There's many others as well, friends. Like you have Pika on Pulse Chain as well has done. It's actually done two big rallies. It had a 30% rally, and the next day again does another 30% rally. So that's pretty nice, actually. This is the USD price chart. It's only 40% down in USD. Man, that is powerful, friends. That is very powerful. Okay, it's only down 34% against Pulse. Wow. Man, I'm yeah, shit, pressing me. You know what you deserve? We need to deserve. Let's take us to the next level with his Pikachu music, friends, and some Pokemon music, actually. <laughs> I dream of friendship. I dream of friendship.
Okay, so if you have money to deploy, throw it in. Oh, man, just I'm telling you now. Look, everyone's in the same position. We're all correlated. You get it now? We're all, literally, everything's correlated. 99% of us are correlated. The 1% that aren't correlated, people think, oh, no, you're not correlated. What actually ends up happening is you find out they are an end of signal, end of cycle uh, occurrence, like Joe Bowden coin. And because, oh, they're not correlated to the rest of the market. No, no, no. It's because the market's gone up to the to its end point, which was March this year. Then people launch coins, people are in the greed mode, and they just start pumping up this stuff. You're like, oh, you're not correlated, see? But actually, if you look at it in terms of like a two or three month window, they are correlated. It's just that you're an end of cycle thing, and then you drop with everything else. Okay, so don't be confused about this correlation. Where does that come from, friends? It comes from the fact that everybody's talking about, well, you know, you can, let's go back to fundamentals and the core coins and stuff. Yeah, bro, uh, how did your coin hold up when Ethereum was shitting itself? Oh, you're down 50, 60, 70, 80%, just like everything else? Okay, what are your fundamentals worth, bro? What are your fundamentals worth? You're down just as much as everything else. Everything's down that same point, right? And by the way, there's 300 sectors now, for just laying on coin, you got 300. So why is your coin and your sector going to go up? Why are you going to be correlated? Why you're you're the one out of 300 that's going to be the winner? Ah, it's tough, friends. Don't forget, right? So yeah, um, I wanted to throw it back. You see, friends, these wider market forces, they're bigger than just any government institution, for example. So friendly reminder, the crypto CC is a puppet wing arm for the US Fed. JP Mosquito insiders are part owners of the US Fed. Their number one goal is to have total control over the US dollar, which means they focus on stopping the people from having free will over currency choice. Don't forget this. This is background stuff, friends. This is background stuff going on. But now you're just seeing these like yen carry and everything capitulates. Got nothing to do with Gary Gensler. Nothing to do with him. So you get to see how irrelevant the corrupt SEC really is in these cases, right? These network effects are bigger than what we take them for. Sometimes, though, you just have to go all in. Generational wealth starts with one risk taker. That's what it comes down to, friends. So, look, um, I guarantee you in 10, 15 years, friends, in, in, in 10, 15 years, people are going to be looking back and they'll say, oh, if I just bought every single time we got that sinking feeling in our stomach, like I want to kill myself. If I just bought every single time that happened, I would have been up. They were all great buying opportunities. What I've just told you is literally what every single great sage, investor, wise person has said every time he's been doing markets 20, 30, 40 years. They go, oh, yeah, every single time I came to that moment in stocks, every five or 10 years, that was the moment I thought it was really over. That was actually the one that gave you outsized returns when you actually crush it later on. Now, enjoy this picture of me again, friends. Remember, the prophet, the prophet, we have it here, okay? Gather around the prophet, for he will speak the true word of the gospel. Soy boys will not make it. Make memes great again. You have to believe in something. You heard it right, my brothers and sisters. Soy drinkers will not be granted the keys to the kingdom of heaven. It could be as simple as that green weekly super trend. It could literally be as simple as that. You go, well, okay, others BTC is lower than it is. Okay, Japan, they're blurring out their genitals in their pornography films. Okay, sweet. There's all these other stuff going on. Like, um, I don't know what show this is from, friends, but this pretty much j summarized the Japanese yen carry trade. Yes, I don't know why. See, friends, that explains everything, right? Just, what's going on over there in Japan? I mean, we've got Pokemon Island. We've got girls putting machine guns out of their butts. Yes. This is a reminder as well. This is Peppy with their little sombrero hat. Pretty cute. And this is where I remind you, right? Do, uh, I have observed a large number of influencers on Twitter say, do not buy immediately. You will have plenty of time to get in later. This increases the odds of a Phoenix recovery. Phoenix rising from the ashes. It does, man. It does. Um, are we going to have it though? It doesn't mean that like, increases the odds. People are saying, oh, very, very low odds. One to two percent. I don't know. It's green on the weekly super trend and no one's using it. You know who likes it though? Uh, big whales. Circle USDC has just minted, printed $250 million. Well, that, that's wild, right? That what, What's that mean, friends? It means, it means a customer or a couple of customers they have um, they've actually put in during these times two hundred and fifty million dollars into Circle's bank account, and they've minted them that for their wallets on chain. Like, hey, here's two hundred fifty million dollars. Obviously, they're going to go buy something. They're probably buying right now. They could be, they're buying somewhere crazy. Yes, it's crazy because you know when they can't go to an exchange and put in two hundred fifty million dollars, they have to go directly to the minter. Uh, they can only put, you know, what can you put? What an exchange that you do from a bank account? One hundred grand maybe max, whatever it is. So these are the big, big dollars. These are the guys actually buying 
big, big, big chunks of the supply. And it's wonderful to see. Tether, when they do it, is like a billion dollars. But hey, man, it's, it's a great start. It's like a good sign. Like, oh, wow, people are buying out here. I found this funny as well. This is hilarious. Now, Romano, friends, uh, let's read this meme out first. Okay, so Romano says, this is this is amazing. The bottom is in when Ansem remembers he has kids. And then literally, look what happens. Vibe check. Here's my kids again. <laughs> Can you believe it? That actually happened, man. That was crazy. Now, Romano, if you remember, Romano, friends, saved the crypto bear market in 2018 from capitulating to zero. He actually... He had to eat a lady's behind. They're called tossing her salad. Tossing her salad. You can look it up what that means. And he, yeah, he ate ass. He did. He literally did. And yeah, he recorded it. Took a photo of it. It was a porn star. I think they got a Vegas hotel room. I forgot which porn star it was. Uh, I know. This is, this, is, this is crypto. This is literally who you're holding with. This is your feather brothers and sisters out there, by the way. You're like, can I rely on this guy? Think about it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can rely on that guy, by the way. Right. You know, the difference between him and politicians is that he actually took a picture while he was doing it. <laughs> hey, all these other politicians, they're doing this weird kinky stuff, getting recorded by the Coconut Intelligence Agency so they can get blackmailed later on without them knowing, okay? Um, and yes, Romano really did do that, friends. And it goes down to one of crypto history in 2018. And he did save the market from going down to zero. Um, so it's just funny, man. These memes live on, man. It's been like six years, six years from now. Kind of funny. Think about it. From 2018, that's the type of stuff I remember. That's that's like unique stuff when there's like a lot of memes and everyone remembers Biz and Archie as well. These are the things you keep forever in your heart. I wonder what we're going to remember from this period. So back to the charts. Where to from here? Okay, where to from here? Well, all we can do, friends, is maybe look at the past and go, uh... <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a do or die. This is the Bitcoin Ponzi fractal. It's, I know, it's just saying, okay, between now and September, we have to do something like that. We have to do something like that. Um, if we really want to go down into the weeds, friends, as well, it would be basically, look, just think about this weekly candle. Bitcoin's at 56,500, all right? If for some miracle, this can close above 58,400 in the next few days. Like, everyone's heads will explode. Be like, oh, you got shaken out. You just had to wait. You just had to wait. Okay, but um, you got to think about this, right? How would you trap the most amount of people in this cycle knowing that they just went through zombie virus 2020? Right, and I'll answer for you that question because it's something I think about. Now, friends, in zombie virus, okay, why did people sell? Why did people sell the lows? Well, look, zombie virus. Look, in one week, this piece of crap scam, Bitcoin dropped fifty two percent. It was down fifty two percent. Altcoins are down seventy percent. Total wipeout. See you later. Scammed. Okay. Now, when that happened. We went, up, we went back up, but no one remembers this part, really. You just you just remember this this fear takes over, okay? Now, in that moment of everything piling down to zero, the fear grips everybody so much, it leaves trauma in your mind. And all the market participants still today in crypto, what are they always doing, friends? They're going back and using that fractal. You know it. Pole chain community, chain link community, crypto banter, uh, all the TA, it's all stuck in our mind. Oh, the zombie virus, the zombie virus, 2020, 2020 March crash. It's still in our minds. Now, here's the thing. If you were a Mr. Market, let's say you were a, f a sixth dimensional being, another entity, okay, how would you mess everyone up? And how would you mess everyone up? Well, you, the answer is this. You would actually repeat the 2015 to 2017 fractal cycle where you have six false alarms of this weekly super trend. It doesn't have to be exactly six, but multiple because you saw this, right? As Bitcoin's gone down 49K, everyone's selling everything. Everyone's de-risking, which means they're just paper handing, selling everything. And it's tricking everyone, right? Because you are now anchoring to zombie virus in your mind. The only pattern people think about is zombie virus, which is I better sell at 30% down because 
in zombie virus, they went 75% down, right? And everything's going to get worse, way worse. I don't have plenty of time. I have a whole week or two to get back in and everything's going to be really bad. And then, and then they might print money and like save everything and give me more conviction. That's what everybody wants when they click out. They're looking for a reason to click out. But actually what ends up happening is it goes down and then we just ping back up. It pings back up within the week. Okay, that, so that's how you would actually mess everybody up. Now, whether there is a been, uh, whether there is like a movie and we're like, there's like a, a silver invisible hand in the background, whether they're just doing that or it's just how market mechanics work, doesn't matter what the cause is, but you know what's happening right now. We're actually seeing it right now. Okay, we're seeing, uh, remember friends, what was uh, 2017 mantra? Hoddle, hold on for dear life. You see that? That was what it is. Hold on for dear life. That was 2017. But then after that happened, we moved on to wag me. We're all going to make it. Okay. And it was diamond hands. Now I know they're just different words and plays and stuff, but the, you, you got to think about this, right? In 2015 to 2017, I'll show you the chart. Hoddle became a meme because it had crash, recover, crash, recover, crash, recover, crash, recover, crash, recover. Right, it was really like you're holding onto a tree, crash recover, right? And he even crash recover. You see that this long period up, you're really holding onto a tree and there's a tornado, right? It really did feel like that. And we're seeing glimpses of that appear again, but not everyone's woken up to it. I guess if we make it to the end and this continues, everyone will finally wake up to it. And it, look, here's the thing, right? It would be poetic justice. If we actually just did continue up, friends, and then we peaked out at some top up here, and right at the top up here, people say, don't worry, if a zombie virus happens, they're going to print money anyway, okay, if everyone says that. See, right now, you probably you're probably thinking to yourself, wait, I've heard some people say that, if they if they think the printing money, printing money coming, yeah, 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 it's true, if, if uh, things crash, they will print money, but there's so much fear in the market, people are still not clicking in. They click sell straight away. So they failed the test. Okay, so they, they said one thing, but then as the market went down, they capitulated out. They just sell out, okay? I think if we discover higher prices, people will be saying, don't worry, they're going to have to print money if we go down. They have to print money, and then we might actually find this scenario, friends. We might find, if you go back to 2017, all right, you should know this, right? The old season was here. This was old season. The final old season where, where Voge does a thousand next XRP, Ethereum, they do their final bursts up. But it would be interesting, right? We do the final thing up and around here, right? And people aren't, they aren't worried here. So we come back down, we have a final crack and we come back. See Bitcoin back down, back to 10K. Everyone is so used to, so you got to think about this. How do we get to that point? That's why we got to that point. We got through all this point by testing all these crashes. Bip. Actually, let's count them here. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five, even here, like almost six, seven, seven times, friends. So basically the market trained you that you are invincible seven times. You go, oh, I'm not going to make this mistake. I'm not selling this time. And they got more aggressive and the, the recoveries got faster each time. Bang, 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 like that. But at the very, very end, everybody's complacent. Everybody's complacent up here, right? Everyone's like, well, we've made it. We've made it. We've made it. Well, I'm trying to imagine that scenario right now. We just lived through a tough one, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much what you're getting, right? If we if we're gonna make it all the way up here, friends, as we got up here, it gets scarier and scarier. But your returns they get worse and worse because you have to buy higher prices in all the all coins and crypto, and you're buying later and you're buying with like everybody else as well. So the the time of your pain it's not as long as what what we went through, but you're paying higher prices. You're playing momentum. That's another way of saying you're playing momentum. So I'm just imagining in my mind how everybody gets screwed, and that's that's pretty much what's, what's actively happening right now. We've just seen one of it, okay? We've just seen one. We basically poke under the weekly super trend, and everyone's like, zombie virus, do you remember 50% down in a therapy but again now? And then the news just disappears. No one's talking about Japan anymore. Everyone's over it already. What happened, man? It was going to blow up the world five seconds ago. You went down telling me it was the end of the world. Okay, it's not the end of the world. Hmm. See how we were worried about that, though? That's probably why there's more pool juice left. The one we will be truly worried about is the one where no one's worried about. 
right? And I don't know what that's going to be. It, who knows what that's going to be? Don't worry, US is in a recession and they're going to print money to save us. They just, remember I told you, friends, remember? That's why I talked about these dark prophecy stuff. I'm like, man, we, we, it's going to be so tough, friends. It's going to be so tough because every mainstream influencer is going to be saying like, Dad, don't worry. Look how far we got. We, we we went through six times of this, man. You think you're going to be the seventh one to think about like exiting now? Yeah, it might actually get to that, okay? It might actually get to that. But for now, okay, we're in the green. We're still in the green. And everyone's like, oh, just wait and see. Just wait and see. We're still in the green, bro. We're still in the green. Okay, you want to give us a nine-year Great Depression? Okay, do it. I'm just telling you now, we're still in the green. We're still in the green. Nothing's changed. You are my friend. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, and I'll catch you in the next one.